here at St. Peter's Island, where whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And uh, we're glad so many of you chose to uh, join us today in the uh, beautiful, unusual Memorial Day weather. Uh, we're glad that you're here. Also want to say a special welcome to everybody uh, joining us online on our Zoom call or uh, watching us later on YouTube or Facebook. We are uh, especially glad that you're with us and we appreciate uh, the time you've spent in uh, spending some of your time this week uh, with us as well. So welcome to everybody. Just a couple of quick announcements before we begin our time of worship today. Um, the first is um, just a, a reminder that our plans are to resume worship indoors in our sanctuary on Sunday, June 20th. That's just a few weeks away. Uh, we are busy working, getting everything ready for that. And uh, to that end, you will be receiving a letter uh, in the mail uh, probably midweek this week with uh, details about some of the restrictions and precautions that will be in place with that change to being back indoors. And so um, you'll also be able to find a copy of that letter on our Facebook page, uh, I believe, on Wednesday. So. Uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact the church office or any of our uh, council members. Um, you may notice uh, something missing behind me today. Barb and Dick are uh, on vacation this week. They're celebrating their anniversary. And uh, so we offer prayers for their safe travels as well as everyone else who's on the road this week. Uh, they pre-recorded the music, so I will be running the computer with the music today. So um, they're, they're certainly here with us in that way as well. Any announcements to share this morning before we get started? All right. Well, let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds then for worship as we hear the playing of this morning's prelude. Thank you.
Will those who are able please stand and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. We come this morning to praise God, the three in one. We come embracing our adoption as sons and daughters of God. Let us come before our God with praise and thanksgiving. Let us worship the God of the Lord his God. Our opening hymn is Holy, Holy, Holy. Thank you. 
Let us join together now in our unison prayer of confession. Eternal God, our maker and our redeemer, we confess that we have tried to hide from you because we have done wrong. We have lived our lives for self and have so often turned away from the path you set before us. We have not heard the cries of those who are oppressed and hide from our sight those who are in need. O oh God, in your great mercy, cleanse us from our sin and grant us the renewal of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the scriptures declare that if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive our sin and cleanse us of our unrighteousness. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. So I'm going to take a second. I have uh, something to pass out for the children's moment. Okay, so what we have is called a thaumatrope, and it is, I'm trying to see for the people at home, it is uh, two different pictures that I've got taped on either side of a pencil. And so depending on which one you got, some of them, mine has a, uh, a goldfish on one side and a, a fishbowl on the other. Uh, some of those I think have a duck and a pond. And so the idea is that if you put the pencil between your hands and spin it fast enough and look at the image, does it start to kind of look like they're become the same image a little bit? A little bit. It's not perfect, but it's, a, it's, it's an example of how two, in this case, two different things can become or at least appear to be one thing, okay? And I use that today because this is Trinity Sunday. Um, the, you'll be able to tell from the music and the liturgy and, and the sermon later that the focus today is on the way that we think about God and what we call the three persons of God and how they are distinct, but how they're the same. And if that doesn't make your head hurt, let me know because it's it's hard to understand. And so all the different ways that we try to think of, of examples of ways to express that fall a little bit short. This is not a perfect example. Uh, a lot of the other examples that you'll hear, I'll post a video on Facebook later that's a, a funny way to think about every way that you describe the Trinity, you wind up committing heresy. And anyway, it's funny for church nerds, trust me. But anyway, but the other reason I wanted to share this is I think it does help us uh, give us a way to think about hard things like the Trinity. So in the case of, of these um, that I gave you today, so like, like mine with the fish and the bowl, each of these by themselves exists fine. The fish is fine, the bowl is fine. But when they work together, it becomes so much more. It fills in the picture, it provides a habitat for the fish, it, it enhances the entire image. And so that's kind of the way that I want you to think about the Trinity, when you can't quite figure out how God can be three things, but one thing, 
like I said, it makes your head hurt. But just it's a way of God existing in ways that fills in that beautiful picture of the love that God brings for each one of us. So let's have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for your presence in whatever way that it takes shape. Sometimes we struggle to understand the ways that you move around and within us, but we give you thanks for your presence nonetheless. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. For our time of prayer today, uh, we have a responsive litany for Memorial Day. You'll find it in your bulletin. And so I invite you, uh, as we enter that time of prayer, to join along with me. Gracious God, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for those who have given their lives in the service of our country. When the need was greatest, they stepped forward and did their duty to defend the freedoms that we enjoy and to win the same for others.
Help us to honor their memory by caring for the family members they've left behind, by ensuring that their wounded comrades are properly cared for, by being watchful caretakers of the freedoms for which they gave their lives, and by demanding that no other young men and women follow them to a soldier's grave, unless the reason is worthy and the cause is just. Holy One, help us to remember that freedom is not free. There are times when its cost is indeed dear. Never let us to forget those who paid so terrible a price to ensure that freedom would be our legacy. Let us have a time of silence. O oh God, though their names may fade with the passing of generations, may we never forget what they have done. Help us to be worthy of their sacrifice, O oh God. Help us to be worthy. Indeed, Lord, we ask this morning that you help us to be worthy also of your love and the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Rejoice, You Pure in Heart. Uh, it's on the insert. The lyrics are on the insert in your bulletin. I invite those who are able to please stand. You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the third chapter of John's Gospel, verses 1 through 17. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. 
Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you will hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except for the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is Trinity Sunday. And so I've been thinking a lot this week about the Trinity and what it means and how I should try to talk about it this morning. And as I also mentioned earlier, quite honestly, it makes my head hurt to do that. Pastor David Lose writes in one of his weekly columns that he has a rule of thumb about the Trinity. And that rule is that people who say they understand it are not to be trusted. And I can certainly understand why he thinks that way. Take, for instance, this definition of the Trinity from the Oxford Dictionary of the Christian Church. The Trinity is the central dogma of Christian theology, that the one God exists in three persons and one substance, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God is one, yet self-differentiated. The God who reveals himself to mankind is one God, equally in three distinct modes of existence, yet remains one through all eternity. Did you get that? If you did, will you come explain it to me after the service? The fact is that the doctrine or the concept of Trinity is something that largely has its origins not in the Bible and not in Jesus' teachings, but rather in the studies of priests and theologians almost 200 years after Jesus walked the earth. These early understandings did draw on biblical references, but not from any explicit scriptural definition. There is, of course, that strange line in the first chapter of Genesis where God says, let us make humankind in our own image. And then there are those three mysterious visitors that appear to Abraham later in Genesis. There are Jesus' instructions in the Great Commission of Matthew chapter 28 that include baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And there's Paul's benediction at the end of his second letter to the Corinthians, where he writes, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. But in the end, we don't have any direct words from Jesus or God on the subject. 
And the result is that humans have taken it upon themselves to define what Trinity is and what it isn't. And well, you can imagine what happens when a debate like that is sent to a committee. It's a sad part of the history of the larger Christian church, but people have been killed over this very topic just for having the wrong viewpoint on the matter. The greatest example of this argument over the makeup of the Trinity may have been the scandal that led to the Council of Nicaea in 317. The debate was over one letter in one word. Was Jesus homoesis, which means of one substance with God, or was he homoesis, which means of like substance with God? Bishops and priests on both sides of the argument were excommunicated from the church, threats were made, and the priest who posited the original argument that Jesus was only of like substance to God, meaning that God and Jesus did not always coexist, that priest was poisoned and killed by several of the other bishops. So much for the good work of the church. So as I study these ancient debates and arguments, I can't help but have the sense that these guys were really missing the point. Sure, it's important how we talk and think about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But when it comes right down to it, our understanding and relationship with God is not governed by some obtuse scholarly definition of something that by definition cannot be defined. I mean, we're talking about God after all. Our understanding of God comes from our experience. And if we let our rationality and our need to be able to explain and to define every aspect of God to take precedence, well, there's little room left for faith. A reading from John this morning helps make the point. We find Nicodemus secretly visiting Jesus at night in an attempt to discover what this young radical rabbi's teachings were really all about. As Jesus teaches Nicodemus about the wonders and mysteries of God, Nicodemus gets hung up on the literal words that Jesus is using. How can one be born again? How can you re-enter your mother's womb? How can these things be? I love the way that Jesus answers Nicodemus. He says, you know that the wind blows but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. In other words, don't get caught up in the mechanics of how it happens, but just allow the experience to shape and guide you. And then comes the simplest and perhaps most difficult of all of Jesus' teachings. God loves everyone. And all we need to do is return that love. Nicodemus is still stuck on the whole born again thing and likely doesn't even hear those words of hope and love from Jesus. But I think that's the point of this passage and it's challenge to us today. We're a lot like Nicodemus. We get wrapped up in the inner workings of our faith and making adjustments to it that we think are needed when our faith does not necessarily line up with our wants and our desires. The history of the worldwide church is full of examples like Nicodemus and those at the Council of Nicaea. There have been church splits, reformations, excommunications, murders, shunnings, disfellowships. The list goes on and on and on, all because of our human frailties and our need to be able to define and control everything, including God. In the end, it's important to remember that as Christians, we do not believe in the quote unquote doctrine of the Trinity. We believe in a loving, living God. 
the doctrine of the Trinity does not try to explain the mystery of God, but instead is an attempt to preserve a mystery that cannot be explained. The Trinity should not be a stumbling block to our faith. It should be a liberating way of thinking about the ways that God's presence is made manifest in each one of our lives. The Eastern Orthodox Church has found a beautiful way to describe the Trinity using a circle. They even have a Greek word for it, perichoresis. Peri meaning around, and choresis literally meaning dancing. Perichoresis means that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are like three dancers holding hands in a circle, moving around harmoniously. Without all three holding on to each other, there'd be no circle. And without moving together in rhythm, there'd be no dance. The emphasis is not on the dis distinct works of each, but on the community of the three. Isn't that a beautiful way to think about God? Understanding the interconnectedness within the Trinity in this manner means we no longer have a main God with two lesser God parts or three different many gods. We have a God that is indivisible and is part of community. God, the creator, the son and the spirit are equals who share all that they are and all that they have. There's no competition. There's no hierarchy. They're in communion with one another. And they're sharing completely in one work and one will. They support and empower each other and they move together as one. When we speak of the Trinity in light of this description, it's not adequate to refer to it as a thing or a doctrine. The Trinity is a relationship, a mysterious but perfect relationship. So imagine, if you will, that we did just that, that we lived in the image of the Trinity, living without feeling that we're in competition with one another, living as if we are equals, living as if there were no hierarchies of gender or race or nationality or sexual preference or income, living in a way so that none is exploited or oppressed. What if we lived sharing completely in one will and one work to love God and to love one another? That's exactly what Jesus was talking about when he tells Nicodemus, for God so loved the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, we have received the spirit of new birth and adoption. So let us respond with gratitude for this gift and for the gift of salvation through the one who creates and liberates us, the one who completes and perfects us, and the one who comforts and sustains us. We respond in this way through our faithful support of the work and ministry of this congregation, and we celebrate those gifts today joining together now in the unison prayer of dedication in your bulletin. We would not dare to think we could give anything to you, O oh God, if you have not called us to present ourselves and our gifts to you. We are blessed that you take the gifts we bring to bring blessings to others. May these gifts Bring honor to your holy name. Amen. My final hymn on this Memorial Day Sunday is America the Beautiful. The words are in your bulletin. I invite those who are able to stand and let us sing together. Thank 
Now, friends, may the grace of God, which is deeper than our imagination, the strength of Christ, which is stronger than our need, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, which is richer than our togetherness, guide and sustain us today and in all of our tomorrows. May we depart now in peace. Amen. <laughs>